What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the Business Breakthrough. Got Keelan Martinez here of Revive Deck Restoration. What's up, brother? Good, how are you? Good, my man. Good. So, man, you called the meeting. I'm looking at your notes here. You know, doing some doing some decent monthly revenue. How long have you been in business? Uh, two and a half years. Started nice. uh 2021, like midway in July. Okay. Uh, was working full time. Right, right, right in the midst of COVID. Yeah. It's crazy. What's wrong with you, bro? Yeah. But uh, I was working full time at a construction uh, okay. general contractor, and I was kind of always doing stuff on the side, like anything in the house, drywall, trim, right, right, right. flooring. Um, but then I really started listening to podcasts and stuff, and really wanted to niche down, and um, came across the idea of like deck staining. Okay. And I already built uh, built tons of decks, so it kind of worked out. Um, wanted to just specialize in one thing because it's easier to train someone to do one thing right. than it is a yeah. thousand things. Uh, so yeah, so after doing it on the side, well, I established uh, 21. After doing it on the side for like a year and a half, I was making more money on the weekends than I was at my full-time job. So after having like a couple months of work, uh, like a month and a half of work, kind of made that leap and yeah, it's been history ever since. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, welcome it's, to uh, welcome to the abyss, brother. Yeah, it's a blessing. <laughs> Never going back. <laughs> Don't go back, man. It's not as scary on this side, man. It's not. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, it's funny, man. Typically, most people think, man, I wish I would have done that sooner, right? You know. Exactly. So, so, uh, so tell me, man, what's going on in the business? Um, there's some admin issues, a little bit of production. You got, you know, of course, sales. Dude, thank you for listening to the pod, dude. It says here that you listen to 300 possibly of the episodes. Yeah, I try to, I try to count and I lost track after three. That's nuts, so. dude. And, and it means the world but, uh, to me. And I hope it's been incredibly valuable for you, man. That's why I nah, do yeah. it. keep doing it, man. I don't know how you do it, but keep I don't doing know it, man. Nah, man. It's, it's, <laughs> honestly, I tell people this, like these breakthrough sessions, my schedule's nuts. But like when I have yeah. one of these, I'm like, this is like where I get to like enjoy every bit, yeah. you know, so it's very re rewarding. Uh, I bet it is it's super rewarding. So, all right, well, where do you want to start, man? Is it, so tell me about the organization. Is it just you? So it's really just me. Um, last year I would have like friends help me here and there okay. kind of under, under the table a little bit. Um, this year I kind of went a little bit of the sub route. I had two buddies that are doing their own thing as well. Okay. Um, so they help me off and on when I need the help, but mostly I am in the field doing most okay. of the work. But uh, is, some of the is, bigger, like, is the lead flow predictable? I mean, being as though you're doing deck restoration, obviously that entails um, mostly you're doing a lot of staining. I'm sure if you're doing staining, yeah. you're doing like, tell me, tell me what, how, how predictable is your lead flow? Because it's kind of concerning. I'm, I'll be honest with you. Um, so when I first established, um, Angie's lead was huge on my success. Um, I had lots of success with Angie's category? lead. Uh, deck builder and deck cleaning okay. and staining. There's okay. two different categories. Okay. Um, so I would say like it's about 50 50 between deck staining slash restoration and then new okay. builds slash composite. Okay. Uh, composite jobs are nice because the margins are higher and stuff, but the jobs take a lot longer. So there's a whole month where I'm kind of having some trouble with some cash flow and stuff. And the staining jobs are awesome because it's easy, cheap labor, faster turnover. Um, Biggest issue I'm having right now is pretty much catching up with my office work. Um, just being in the field so much and then coming home, staying up till one, two o'clock every night gets kind of old. Um, so there's some days where like Fridays, like usually Fridays are my estimate days. So I'm driving around like crazy. And then Saturday, I, if I have time to work on it, but then it's like Monday comes around and I'm kind of like back in the field and catching up on work at night. Right. So I've been trying to get better at like time blocking and stuff, but. Pricing on a spot is something I would really like to do. Um, I was looking at your the new thing you just came out with for the uh, for what's called. Right? The, yes, yes. Yeah, um, I mean, that's gonna be good for staining, not so much. How much? What's the percentage of staining versus install and building that you're doing? I would say it's like fifty fifty. Really? Um, yeah. My bread and butter, I would like to be the staining because I can. I mean, it's, gonna, it's gonna be hard for you to price. You know, what, what most people do in this space is they, they assign allowances to materials um, or they just charge labor and then bill for materials. That's the play, because unless you're trying to mark up your materials, I mean, you can. But the but the play, and especially when I sell flooring is I'm selling you labor. You buy the labor. I'm going to bill you for the flooring or you buy the, the flooring yourself. I don't care what you do. I don't yeah. care. Who it, right. That's going to slow you down. So how have you been doing it? Have you been trying to sell the materials along with the labor? So, yeah. So 
I have a pretty good spreadsheet for the composite stuff where I like did all the math and divided right. by square foot. So I have like a square foot number and a spreadsheet. Okay. I type in square foot. I type in how many railing spaces. Okay. And then from there, like, there's three different levels of composite. Well, wood's the cheapest. And then there's three different levels of composite. Okay. And the railings, there's like wood railing and then like three different levels of vinyl railing and then three right. different levels of like metal railing. Right. So like when I'm sending these composite quotes out, I send out all the different options so they can pick and choose. Um, but it's just like the estimating process just sometimes takes so long and I would like to price on the spot, but uh, lots of times it's some things are unique and things are taking me a while and then okay. I'm doing two, four hours on an estimate and then don't get the job and it's just repeats. Sure. Um, but I understand like you're not gonna get every job and stuff and I would say every two and ten, two out of 10 jobs I would probably get. Yeah. And why do you think that is? Composite. On the composite side, it's just really expensive. Um, on the staining side, it's a little bit easier to estimate and stuff. It's a little bit cheaper. I mean, when you uh, once you get out, honestly speaking here, like, do you think that this business is sustainable? Like, do you really think that like there's that much of a demand for what you're doing to be able to keep multiple crews busy, having four to five jobs going on at once? If you nail the system, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Um, you said Angie Lee's was doing really well for you. What else has been doing well for you? Um, my Google presence has been a lot better over the past years. This year, I haven't used any uh, Angie Leads or anything. It's mostly okay. all Google. Okay. Um, barely any word to mouth. I've only been okay. around a short time. So, okay. um, but I haven't really dove into like Facebook ads or anything. I've been trying to just focus on like the Google stuff. And if right. I really need to, I can push the Angie's. Right. Um, and just doing like the natural uh, social media Your posts and stuff is, like that is, is incredibly varied. And I think one of the problems is, is that you're spending too much time on design. Ultimately what, what that requires is a consultation. dude. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you're giving all that away for free and there's a time and a place for that. Um, but I think there's room for a few things. First of all, technology, right? I mean, ultimately I'm sure there's some good technology out there that can help visualize what people are using are you using any sort of technology to help with that like so yeah i do some some 3d mock-ups um okay. i try not to do it because it takes a lot of time but if like if a, if a customer is really interested and i kind of uh know they're probably pick me i do give them some 3d mock-ups and stuff what is your what is your pre-qualification on the phone line see that's the thing i don't really have a pre-qualification a little bit of a sidetrack but i also started a christmas like division in the winter last year <laughs> and i did things a little bit dif differently there where I did pre-qualify. Okay. It's a little bit easier then because it's like, all right, we have a minimum job order of 600 with an average size of 1,500. Are you still interested? Sure. And then if they said yes or no, go from there. Awesome. That was a great business. I can't wait to do that again in the winter. This one, it's like most of the times people just have like a deck that's uh, getting old and just want an idea of like uh, what they can do either to restore it or new build. So, which usually involves me going so my, there. So, so my, my suggestion is this, first of all, everything you should be do should, everything that you need to be doing right now is to, is to streamline this experience. You, you're, you're now, now that you told me you have three businesses, deck restoration, deck installation, and now Christmas lights and you're <laughs> one human dude. You yeah. Slow down. Okay. You got a man. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. So, so even if you just did deck staining, you'd probably be a happier person. Okay. For sure. I mean, you know, are you really like hitting home runs on these deck building? I mean, and, and here's the thing, like, like, do you really like make a lot of money off of these, off of building decks? Your cash yes and no. It takes too when long. it, when it takes too long on the project, I'm obviously losing money and it seems like almost every project's doing that. Um, even with like, I'm pretty good at like with my 50% margins, like taking my labor times two, material times two. So it kind of helps me if the job goes a little bit longer, but then again, I'm losing profit. I just find myself the just problem, on the hamster wheel. Man, this is your first business, right? It sounds like I think, and and the problem is, is that this is a very like it's chaos. I mean, it, it is, dude. It's like you know, you're hoping to get staining jobs. When you get a staining job, you're you're you feel happy. You're like, yes, like I can nail this. Good money, good profit, in and out. Collect the cash and go. Okay. Then you had, then you get a deck restoration call and your cortisol level shoots up higher than it normally should because you're like, okay, are you going to hire me? Like, I'm going to waste all this energy. I got to stop what I'm doing 
first, I'm trying to pre-qualify you on the phone. You don't even know what you want. Okay. You exactly. want me to look at this wooden deck. Okay. Um, there's a couple ways we can go here. I think the first way is for you to start doing virtual things. Okay. I don't think there's anything wrong with asking for photos. Are you doing that? So as of the past like month, I've been really pushing that. Um, okay. Some jobs, it's like some people are like, like you said, like they don't really know what they want. And like, right. some they'll, they'll be like, oh, some boards are rotten here and there, blah, blah, blah. It's like uh, they gave me square footage and stuff and that. But some things are kind of like a lot. Of, sometimes it's like repair work, but they also want to see how much it is to to replace the whole deck and stuff. Sure. So I'm giving sure. them all types of prices. All types of prices. Replacing a whole deck, like like we talked about, is that is that your gold star service? Like, is that where you make? Is that where it's is? It, and here's my rule of thumb: Is it easy to sell? Is it easy to market? And is it easy to produce? Okay, like the business is about survival. And you might like doing this, but it might not be the thing that's going to take you to the place of freedom, right? You're in this for freedom. I'm sure you don't like building decks that much. Like, I don't know. Right, right. You want to make money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you want, like I'm being honest. We got to be honest here. Cause like, the thing is, is like you lit up about Christmas lights because it was easy to market, easy to sell, easy to produce. You light up about stain, easy to market, easy to sell, easy to produce. Okay. What I would do is I would get rid of deck building. I would not even do it. I would do repair because guess what repair leads to staining, right? Yeah. The only way you do a repair is if you stain the whole thing, sand it down and stain the whole thing. That's included. We don't just replace boards. Homeowner's not going to be staining. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. and then outline those expectations, say happy to do a repair, but we do have a minimum. Typically with our repair jobs, we require a full stain on the entire deck. We'll seal the whole thing, right? So you need to teach your market how to buy from you. That's very important. Because you're being thrown in all different directions, right? Like deck building, save that. Like, don't even, I wouldn't even do it anymore. You know? Yeah. Like, do you, I mean, what do you, have you thought about just like not doing that anymore? So it's just, I like it in the aspect of the margins are better, bigger checks. Well, it, but looks, it's just the whole, it looks that way. Yeah, <laughs> right. but the cash, yeah. But, it, but think about, well, there's this concept that you need to understand. It's called opportunity cost, right? It's what you're giving up in exchange, right? And think about it this way. If you have five stain jobs at 2000 a pop, I'm paraphrasing here, and a deck job at 10000 you know what I'm saying? One deck job, you're one person. The problem is, is that if, if you were a general contractor and you were, you were doing five to six different um, remodeling jobs, exterior remodeling jobs. All right, that makes sense. And the reason why that works is because the cash flow comes from all the different jobs at different stages of the job, right? Yes. But, but you have one thing that you have to like bull no, bulldog through in order to get your cash flow, which means you, you're not confident enough to hire help because you don't even know if you can you can pay them. Yep, exactly. You know what I'm saying? But if you have stain jobs, right? I would even say, man, venture into fence staining, you know, yeah, maybe even we fence, do that too. Maybe even fence installation, right? That's a more predictable, yeah. that's a more. Yeah. I quote fences too. We do decks and fences. Are you um, going to install fences? I haven't installed any. I quoted them, but uh, I never, would it's you, just mostly staining. Have you the opportunity? Yeah, I've done it, but I, I probably only done like a couple compared to how much deck staining. Okay. Um, the whole fence, I mean, fences are expensive obviously to build um but even staining can be a little bit expensive so a lot of times people don't end up choosing to rebuild their fence or whatever and even sometimes they don't choose to stain their fence but Dude, the thing is is that like the goal here is to build momentum because there's this thing that has to happen you're going to be stuck in the same position unless you make a drastic decision whether that's to remove the installation entirely you already made a big mistake you're like Google's working, so I'm going to shut off Angie Leads. That is not a investor move. That's a silly move because that's like pretty much saying this stock made me a lot of money, but this other stock's making me money, so I'm not going to invest in that stock anymore. Yeah, and I love Angie Leads, and uh, every once in a while I'll go in there and like accept a few jobs. It's just kind of the cash flow. I don't even have money to freaking put into that right now because I'm so tight sure. with these composite sure. jobs. And yeah. with the composite jobs, even with the 50% down, 
most of the time it's I need a little you're bit more sometimes for that, material. You're burning up the materials, right? Yeah. And it's also how you facilitate that exchange. You need to stop if you're gonna continue this, stop buying the materials. That's not your job. You can sell the labor, get fifty percent on the labor, and then build them the whole bill for the materials. So I'm charging ten K. It's gonna be five K down. And then I'm gonna bill you for materials. So now you covered the cash flow for the labor like and then they pay for the materials so it doesn't look like a monster deposit. It's the same thing, but you gotta be able to frame it in a way where the where the customer says, Oh, that makes sense. If you had to that- I mean, if you had to do that, if you're gonna take it, you say, Hey, here's how we do it. This is the labor cost, okay? I'm allocating X amount of time for this. Okay. I'm gonna give you what we believe to be an allowance amount for the materials generally speaking in my experience the materials for what you're trying to do are going to be about 6k okay what we need to do and here's this is a smart play on your part you need to go to home depot and get a line of credit okay get a line of credit for 10 to 15k they only allow me to get a thousand right now (laughs) well if you you know and and sometimes that's the case but let's get to a point where you can do that because It'll, it'll even be more impressive if you buy the materials and finance them through Home Depot and then give them the receipt. Say, hey, I paid for these materials. Here's the receipt. Okay. Option number two is you go to Home Depot, put in the entire order. Okay. Tell them, hold this for me. Get the, get the ticket and then give it to the customer. Say, hey, here's your entire order from Home Depot. I like go, that. Go I've, buy it. I've done that. A handful of times for like uh, friends and families because I didn't want to upcharge them on material sure. and it worked smooth. So now you're saying it like that. I actually love that idea because yeah. it takes a lot of stress for me with the material because material is crazy and then I'm already paying labor well, for that whole. That you're still guessing on materials. You know you are. I mean, it's- <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, those margins help. Uh, like the 50% margins help. But like you said, uh, it adds yeah, up. Man, and stuff. Just- just, you know, but I think the decision needs to be like, how can we get you in a momentum swing? Now watch this. What if you just niche down on staining, right? Or even painting, dude. I bet you'll paint something, won't you? No. You want to paint? Uh, interior? No, I'm good. I have well, exterior that. stuff. Would you do exterior, any exterior? Uh, I have no knowledge of that, so I would okay. have to okay. research so the thing that. Is, so. is that, like, my thought is this, dude. If you just narrow down to staining and repair, which should should capitalize on that the thing is is you need to build just enough momentum to where you can hire help and predict the results right then if you get to a position where you're flowing that's when you take on those deck building projects dude because like like that like i imagine this six months from now maybe you've generated 150 to 200 thousand in stain work and repair work and maybe some fence staining and things like that okay you're at a point now where you built trust with an employee that can do that work for you while you're not there. Now, when you go and do those estimates, you're a little more focused. You're not rushed. You can sit in the car for 45 minutes and work it up, not thinking I got to get back to my job, which maybe that happens. I know you allocate certain days to that. That might be happening now. But then again, you're doing your estimates on Saturday. You're exhausted. Monday, you got to wake up and you got to go do another job. Exactly. That's mentally taxing, dude. Yeah. For sure, um, like you're shifting, you're you're, you're probably going nuts. Are you, what's it's Thursday? Out, it's Thursday. What, what's going on right now? Do you have any any jobs going on right now? I don't have anyone working for me right now. I just have a sting okay. job after this. I have, you have a sting uh, job. Like six six estimates tomorrow. Six estimates. Out of those six estimates, how many are staining? Uh, I would probably say like fifty percent again. Really? Yeah. A lot of people are really interested in getting uh, composite uh, quotes. So composite like quotes, when you say composite, you mean the type of like swapping out the wood for a, uh, you know, a composite yeah, type. Re- resurfacing pretty much. Yeah. Taking the wood resurfacing. off and putting composite you, boards. You, you keep the frame of the, uh, of the deck and then you just replace the, the, the boards. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's a killer deal. But then again, that, does that composite get, get stained? Like, can it absorb stain? How do you handle that? No, the composite right. just. It um, comes stained. It's, so already, it's like match. a plastic kind of material okay. you have to match the frame of the of the deck to it or no no the frame uh usually in the outside frame i put a white fascia board like a pvc fascia board okay um 
and then composite on top, vinyl railings. Okay, so you're redoing all the railings, like you're anything that that is existing can't be seen anyway, right? Yes, correct. Okay. So, I mean, that's, you know, I could see, I could see how that can get kind of tricky, but also it's a good business, man. It's, I could see why, you know, people would want that. There's a, there's a lot here, dude, but I think that if you can figure out how to separate the materials from the labor, you might put yourself in a better position financially because you need the cash. I like that. How long does yeah, this like job that. usually take? A week? The composite jobs, some can take a week, some can take three weeks, four weeks, depending on the size. And, really? and it's mostly because I'm doing it with on my own and as okay. well with like a, one or two people helping me. So are you outlining a payment plan in terms of like a draw schedule for customers? So I don't have anything. Of, this is something I need to work on. Okay. I don't How have do you anything. handle the money? If it's a long job. Tell me what that would usually look like. So kind of like if I go to a stage where like midway in the job, I'll try to ask for the next 25%. So 50% down up front. Halfway through the job, I ask for another 25%. And then by the time we're finished by a job, I get the other 25%. And that's pretty much gone because of labor and all the other stuff. That, this is why you're running into this is because you can only produce one job at a time. Yeah. And the cap, right. So I think it would be wise for you if you can find someone that can do the stain work and you just keep managing the composite installation flow. And gotcha. if you're not busy, he helps you. I think two jobs going on at one time will save your business. Yeah. You know? And it would be someone full time. And that's new to you because you've never hired anyone full time employee before, I imagine, right? Nope. Okay. So let's talk about that. You know, you've listened to my podcast, so you know most of what I'm going to say. <laughs> you know, you know, but it's important for you to understand that, like, dude, like, this is the goal, man. You, there's always going to be that risk of should I hire someone? You might be looking at your bank account thinking no way. But it also has to do with um, the fact. No, you're good. Yeah, it's okay. Can you hear me? Can you yeah, hear me? yeah, but I had a phone you call know? and like it. No, it's okay. Good. Yeah. So, so it also has to do with like the fact that like, dude, you're going to run into this even at the next level of your business is like, is it the right time to hire? So this, you got to look at it as like a reinvestment into your business. You got to be the investor. You got to say, you know what? This next job I get, I'm going to ask for a higher deposit so I have a little cash. And then I'm going to position my employee to start in two weeks and line it up to where I know I'm going to get paid so I can pay him that first check. You know what I'm saying? And you kind of have to stagger it out until, you know, it's going to be a weird transition. Then, you know, have you, have, you, uh, have you thought about putting out an ad? I mean, you know. I think about it all the time. <laughs> I think about it all the time, but it's just. I've been so tight. I have two kids. I have a mortgage and stuff. So like, I've been so tight with things. I even had I haven't had time to save money to kind of prepare for that. But like you said, if I have enough work lined up, enough deposits lined up, I can kind of plan for that employee. Make you money. Exactly. Like, the employee, the employee, like that's almost like you're you have to buy in, right? There's always a buy in, and and like not putting out an ad is silly. Because I think that there's some motivation that's going to be created there when you know you have a good applicant. Let me ask you this. Ready? If I moved to your area right now and I had your number from a business breakthrough we did five years ago, right? And I'm down on my luck, man. It just strip jobs, tanked. I'm freaking, I'm not doing well. And, I, and I'm like, you know what? I would love to get into deck restoration. And I call you and you're at the same spot you're at now in your business, same amount of money, same everything. I said, hey, brother. Can you give me some work? What would you say to me? I, was, I wouldn't be able to afford it full time. I could say something about uh, you can help me part time kind of deal. <laughs> okay, but you'd find something for me to do. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Because you know, probably I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to add to your operation. I'm going to add value. You're going to be like, you know what? I don't have any money, but you know what? You can come part time and I'll figure it out. Okay. Dude, that right there is what drives business growth is you understanding that you are the facilitator of supply and demand, right? If you have really good supply, and that would be the worker who does really good work that doesn't need to be supervised, that can produce a result without you physically being there, and then you can find the demand, a really good client that'll pay really good money for a good result, and you connect those two things, you have now entered into a different ball game, bro. 
but you can't go into that ball game unless you take the risk and pay the ticket and the price of admission is you got to be a good recruiter and you being apprehensive of even putting out an ad you need practice there you've heard me say this i know i said it i I know (laughs) like you gotta be you have to at least see what's out there dude there could be someone right now that's hating their boss that that would love to do deck restoration or someone that's moving into town and maybe they help you even further and say i also install this stuff so you have a hybrid and right now it might look like a cost but guess what happens your job time shrink down the cash flow goes up and you can do one thing and he can do another thing. That's a reality. But you won't, yeah. dude, you, if you don't do this, you're not going to, you're going to be even more. You, you, how old are your kids? I have a six-year-old boy and a one-and-a-half-year-old uh, daughter. You're tired. I'm so tired, man. I come you're home, tired. see him for two hours. and Is uh, that the life you, know. you want, dude? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> It's no stressful, way. man. You're exhausted, bro. Like, I'm so exhausted. But but don't you took a risk quitting your job? Wasn't that risky? Does your does your significant other work? Uh, she just started working. She was a stay at home mom for a while. Um, she started working a couple months ago. Okay. Did she have to go to work? Uh, mm, no. It was more so some other personal issues. Okay. Um, she kind of wanted to like be more independent and stuff. So okay. Okay. So I imagine that if you get this business figured out, it would benefit the household, right? I mean, for sure, yeah. And wouldn't it? It probably takes stress off or pressure off. I mean, these are real situations that men go through, dude. Starting a business, and there's nothing wrong with it. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. You can't stop taking risks. You got to be willing to lose it. And you're not uh-huh. playing. You're playing small, man. You're just like, okay, I'm gonna do this work, and like, get the ad out, dude get it out so because guess what if you get a great applicant that calls your business and says hey man i just came into town i've been doing deck restoration since i was knee high to a duck ass okay an old southern saying (laughs) (laughs) you know and and someone that has just like done this stuff and it's like hey man i love to work with you i have a lot of experience i've been doing it for x amount of years do you have any work and you'd say yes i do and you go meet him and you go through the process of figuring out who, what he's about. And guess what you're going to feel? Progress. You don't feel any progress right now. You're just treadmilling. For sure. For sure. Um, should I just jump and kind of hire him full time? Should I start with like a part time worker or just make the leap and try to do full time and just hustle and grind? Right now you have no pressure. The only pressure you have is the money you make. And you can forgive yourself. It's like if you don't go to the gym, no one knows about it. Yeah. No one, you don't run, no one knows about it. It's like, God, oh, it's between me and you, Tanner. You know, we'll just not tell anyone, you know? So you got to understand, man, that like if you know that someone's meeting you at the gym and they're waiting for you to work out, that that's going to move you to make a different type of decision. Do I let this person down and look like an idiot? Or do I show up to the gym and keep my promises? Business owners that win keep their promises to themselves first and then to everyone else, right? I like that. But you got to position yourself to prepare for the challenge of keeping promises to other people by actually making the promises to the people, you know? And there was times where, dude, like I didn't know where I would find the work. I had one job on a Monday and nothing else, maybe three or four employees at the time. And it was Thursday. And if it were just me painting, I'd say, all right, well, I guess, you know, we're in trouble. I mean, we'll drum something up the following week. Brother, I've been in business for eight years. I never had a day off of work, never. And most of that was because I did not want to have a conversation with people that I told would have full-time work, that they didn't have any work because they have families to feed. I want the pressure. And through that, you get the end result, which is a business that runs mostly without you, income that comes in every single week and the freedom to do what you want with your time. If that's a yeah. worthy cause, you got to be willing to give something up for that. And you not even putting out the ad. I don't want you, you're asking me, should I do full-time or part? Bro, you know the answer to this. Don't ask those questions. Just be certain. You got to build that confidence in yourself, dude. You have done a lot already. Yeah. Worst case scenario, you go back to your job, right? Never going back. <laughs> but yeah, worst okay. case scenario, yeah. Never going back, right? So you have a rule that you set for yourself that says, I'm never 
going to go back. Okay. So there's a baseline there. Well, guess what? When you bring on an employee, there's a new baseline created when he tells you he has two kids and he says, I need work. And you say, I'll never make, I'll never allow you to not have work. We'll find something to do. And I've met, sure. I've talked with people that said, Hey, we didn't have work and I'm having them paint my house. Yeah. <laughs> you know? True. You know, if that's the third or fourth paint job this year, we might need to talk about some marketing. But at the end of the day, man, that's the type of leader you want to be if you want people to buy into you, man. Not everyone's like that. They'll just say, Hey man, no work today. Sorry, you're not making money. That's not yeah. okay. With me. That is not okay with me. So you need to make sure that's your new baseline. And you can't do that unless you enter into the game. I'm not saying you need to pay someone a full paycheck tomorrow, but you need to get the you need to get an ad out so you can facilitate the experience. It takes a few weeks to get a to land a huge hire. And you need to make it seem like you got your stuff together. Yeah, for sure. I know you don't even have Gusto set up, but you're gonna get that set up too. Okay. So I I've started Gusto to pay like my subs. Um, but it's I this is as of like last month, but I will definitely use Gus uh, Gusco when I hire someone. It's not it's get it prepared for you know, you gotta learn that. So at the end of the day, you want people to feel like that getting hired by you is progress. You don't want someone to come into your business thinking you don't have your ducks in a row. And there's been many times where in my business, both businesses, I didn't have my ducks in a row and I got them in a row before the person started. That's normal. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have them in a row, but the fact of the matter is I knew they were coming. So they're, they're, I'm gonna, that's my focus is to make sure that when they get here, there's a system for them to work within and they're not questioning if I have my stuff together because i ultimately impact their destiny dude that's a very big responsibility they need to know that you got your stuff together so you need to tell me you don't have angie leads like the thing is i want you to focus on reinvesting back into this business you need to outline what you're going to do you need to create a menu of what you do because it's it can get out of control you heard me say this analogy i'm sure go to a restaurant and it's a steakhouse, and you ask for over easy eggs and bacon and hash browns. You know, don't be the restaurant that just bends to everyone's request. Yeah. Because you don't want to piss them off or you don't want to lose the business. Not really. You know what I'm saying? Another question, too. So, like, you talked about the consultations and estimates. Should I, and I've been trying to push the free as like free virtual estimates and then doing like a $25 consultation fee. If you want me to do oh, in person, never do that. Oh yeah. I mean, that just sounds so that's because you don't have your ducks in a row. If yeah. you were estimating full time, it'd be a pleasure for you. Now I want you to understand that there's a difference between wasting time, you know, and setting expectations. And I think I did a really, did you listen to the episode I did with Tom Reber on here? Uh, one of them. Yeah. Yeah, he was, I only did one, but okay. Then I did listen to it. Okay, go back into that. This guy outlines his Shin Fu method, and it's it's yeah. a powerful method of just outlining the expectations of what you provide, how you say it matters. So if you call me for a deck restoration estimate, the first thing I need to do is categorize what category you're in. So are you in the planning and you know research process? Are you close to getting this done? What is the time frame you want this done? We're coming into, you know, you know the seasonality of your area. So we want to make sure that we're investing time in people that are close to making a decision, right? Have yeah. you got any prices for this project or am I the first estimate, right? That's another powerful question to help you understand. Are you setting the market or are you verifying the market, right? Like I want to know where I'm at. If this was my area of expertise okay say the third aspect is okay here's how we do it we do this all the time typically the way we want it to be done is you're going to send in a few photos of your deck okay we're going to review those internally and then we're going to call you back with some feedback okay and we can have a good conversation about this so when you go through the callback this is where you set financial expectations so miss looking at this deck we have about we have two options here we can do a full tear down or we can do option B. Typically, full teardown ranges between 10 and 20 grand. That's usually assuming you're going with high end materials. Don't worry, we charge you labor and then bill you at cost for materials, right? 
Option B is a repair XYZ that typically ranges between three grand and 10 grand. Which of those two options work best for you? Oh, definitely the three grand to 10 grand option. Fantastic. Does Tuesday work good? I'd love to come by and show you some samples. Gotcha. Do you understand how that saved your life? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Pre-qualification is huge. I just haven't really figured out how to do it. Well, the that. problem is, is you can't pre-qualify on the first phone call. That's the big problem, okay? Because if you're trying to do that on the first phone call, which you might be doing because you're busy, and you're spitting out this weird $25 fee, like... Yeah. I, that, I, that was just like as of last week and yeah, only one customer. Never do that again. Um, I, I would be like, what? Here. Do you need 30? Get you <laughs> home? <laughs> you know? Oh God. So, so the thing about it is, is when you get, you got to set, Hey, we do a consultation call. Are you using drip jobs? Are you drip jobs? Using? Oh yeah. Yeah. All right, I love drip jobs, man. <laughs> Okay. And the, so, the energy thing is awesome too. That's one of the reasons why I pick drip jobs. Beautiful. Drip jobs beautiful. Too. So the thing is, is you can frame that in drip jobs with the drips, you know, so you can, you know, in drip jobs, the booking form has a photo upload option. Okay. So if okay. you go there, you can require a photo to be uploaded in the booking form. So if they book with you, they have to upload photos and then you can create drip messages that explain the process of how to buy from you. So in other words, when they come in as a request, thank you so much for the request. We are reviewing your photos. The next step is a quick consultation call. Please let me know if you prefer mornings or afternoons, today or tomorrow. And they'll respond today, this afternoon. Perfect. This afternoon, you call them and say, hi, got your photos. We're looking at everything. And that's where you create the scenarios. And what you're doing is, is you're kind of creating a gap. Uh, sorry, you're cr kind of creating an expectation gap between what their expectations are and what it really is. And whatever that threshold is, it's, it's just going to create a better experience for both of you. You're not going to feel like you're wasting your time. And in this area, I highly suggest it has to be a strong pre-qualification. With painting, for me, it's not as, as, as serious, you know, but with yours, I mean, there's a lot of time invested in sourcing materials, figuring out costs. But what we discussed today was isolating the materials because that's such a big variable. You can create an allowance. You could create a ballpark. You could create, you could say, hey, look, in previous experiences, we calculate this. Generally speaking, you're at around 5K for materials. Our labor cost is 4K. Okay. The materials are variable and we're going to give you a receipt from Home Depot. We're going to order them at Home Depot and you pay Home Depot directly. Okay. So a little bit sidetracked, the Home Depot thing I love, Home Depot does the volume price savings where any order over 1500 you, uh, you get some discounts. So sometimes like I'll show the customer the Home Depot order and say it's five grand, but with my volume savings discount, it might be like 4,500 or like 4,000. Do I give them the five grand or give them the 45 or 4,000 like with my discount? If, like if you're sell the materials it costs whatever okay. the cost is it makes you look good and increase your labor price your labor price should feel uncomfortable okay it gotcha. should honestly sound uncomfortable when you sell the labor price they don't know it's just you doing it and you don't need to say it's just you doing it. our team yeah i always say we I always say stuff like that to make always it seem we, bigger we but. come in everything is about perception yep Okay, your job is to match or exceed the fulfillment in whatever you're promising, and that takes some time, bro. When I first sold drip jobs, anyone listen to this, dude? That thing was not what I was promising, but I knew I'd get us there, and I and I and I had to, I had to internally, I had to feel, I felt a little bad sometimes because I was over. I had, you have to do that sometimes, okay? When that thing was sending the wrong follow ups at the wrong time. You know, I had to say my apologies, man. I had to, I had to face it, but then it made me a lot more motivated to get it right. And that was always my intention. And I think we're there now, but the goal here is to teach you that you might have to over promise and under deliver to get to a point where you can under promise and over deliver. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a, that's a period of time you have to go through in business. You know, you're not just always have good intent, always look out for people and just give your best, you know, make sure they're, make sure they're happy, which I don't doubt you do. 
get the ad out, get the ad out and spend the next hour of your time creating a framework of how people buy from you. Watch this. Okay. Let me show you something. You got it. You got to do this, man. You have to do this. If this doesn't get done, you're, you're going to be screwed. So let's see if you can see this, dude. All right. So hold on. We got option A. We got option B, right? Okay. And then you're just going to do like a freaking thing here. And I'm going to just show you something real quick. This is going to be super like, you know, 3,000 to 10,000. And then this one's like 2,000 to like, let's see, like 5,000. All right. Can you see this? Let's see if it lets you see that. You see that? Yeah. 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 That's it, bro. You just, that's your, that's the business. It's either option A or option B. That's how we do it. Anything outside of that, we don't do. I don't want my dentist telling me that he can, you know, or my, my general freaking doctor telling me he can work on my teeth. He's not a freaking specialist. Just be honest with me and send me to a dentist. You know? I like that. Anything else, man? Where we, where we depart? You kind of answered a lot of questions about, I was, one question was like, include labor in the price or keep labor separate. You kind of answered that with the composite side, at least. With the staining side, do I staining keep it? Side, some stain, dude. Just yeah, not, you work all that into. You know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, and then like, so I always try to under promise and over deliver, but it usually doesn't work out that way. So like, anytime I do get a phone call or something, I try to make it seem like we are kind of busy, like we're one to two months out, um, oh. blah blah blah. But depending on the project, we might Why? be able to move you forward. Do I say that or just kind of just take it as it is? You know, that's a negative experience off the bat. Who the heck wants to wait that long for anything? Yeah. You don't need to do that. You just need okay. to have a process. It's like, dude, think of the restaurant, okay? You go ever go to a restaurant before? Yeah. Okay, well, when you go in there, there's a process in place. We can go through it. You greet the host. The host says, wait one second. I'm going to find you a table. You go in. You sit at the table, Okay. Then someone comes up to you, they take your drink orders. Generally speaking, you get a menu. And then after they're done, they take your food. And then you get your food. You go through the experience of eating. You get the check. You pay. You leave. It's the same thing every single time. And, and everyone agreed with this in all restaurants. Now, some restaurants are stubborn and they, don't, they want you to seat yourself. Okay. But you still get the rest of the experience, right? Mm -hmm. You need to create a process, a cookie cutter process of how you intake and fulfill, intake and fulfill, intake and fulfill, right? So that has to do with your miss. Oh, okay. We got to first categorize who's calling. Hey, are you looking for restoration or staining? Yeah, oh, yeah. Staining category. Cool. What is our process for staining? Excellent. We love doing stain jobs. Typically we can come out on Fridays. We'll go over everything with you. Um, have you chosen a stain color before or have you chosen a stain color yet? Would you like me to bring a, a color deck? Yeah. Awesome. See you there. Got it. Cause you know, you can close those easy. Yeah. Oh, this is a restoration. Fantastic. Have you gotten any quotes yet for it? No, you're the first. Okay. No problem. How long are you looking to, until you get this project done? Oh, as soon as possible. Fantastic. All right, cool. So typically here's where we get into our system. Typically how we do this, I'm going to send you a link. I'd love for you to fill out all your information. That's the drip jobs form. There's an area in that form to upload photos. Please submit three or four photos of the deck. Once we receive all the information, we're going to call you back for a consultation call. And we're going to go over the options for you. How does that sound? I like that. Um... So right now my booking form is on my website. Uh, book a request. Kind of ask the simple questions. There. I what's, did what's edit uh, reviveyourdeck.com. Revive what? Revive your deck. Uh, cool. Good domain. Thank you. Revive deck restoration. Book requests. Got it. Okay. Cool. You know you're just missing. The, you're just using the standard form. You got to customize this form. Gotcha. So in drip jobs. You can go to the booking form section, customize the questions, and we can get those qualification questions I just asked you on that form. Are you looking for staining, restoration, rebuild? Like, and then are you in the planning and budgeting phase? Have you gotten an estimate yet from another company or 
No, you're the first estimate. Awesome. If this is a deck restoration, please submit three to four photos of the deck. Or you could just get photos of everyone's deck. Please submit three to four photos of the deck. They can't book it without sending you photos. So you're already speeding wow. up that process. You got to look at it. I just really know this is wild, bro. <laughs> it, it, it's all the same. The thing is, is wh why this is easy for me is because it doesn't matter what you're doing. It's just it needs to be easy to sell, easy to market, easy to produce. And for the customer, it needs to be easy to buy. And right then, if you can figure all that out, you will be ahead of the curve. You will win the game. But the confusion is what's causing the, 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 the frustration. And the problem is, is if you don't have predictability, everything I told you, the goal of that is just predictability. You need to know, hey, okay, cool. We have a process for this. Restoration, stain. Planning and budgeting, ready to go. Got estimate, never got an estimate before. Okay. I like have that. we done a consultation call? So you should create a, a stage and drip jobs that says consultation call complete. And then you can send an, an email. So if you message our team, and we're about to release this where you can add your own stages, but you can send a message to our team to have them add that for you. And then you create a follow-up message that says, thank you so much for meeting us with the consultation call. In that call, we outlined expectations. Please let us know if you're prepared for an official quote by clicking the link below. We can book a time. Wow, okay. So this way you're only allocating your physical time to people that already understand the expectations and you're not wasting that drive, not sitting there doing things that you could be doing from afar. Yeah. Like tomorrow I have an estimate. It's an hour away. Oh, hour you know, back. If I were you. And I, I, would... I called her and I was trying to figure out like the issues and stuff. And she gave me like no information. <laughs> She's like, yeah. oh, I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain it. Blah, blah, blah. It's easier for you to come here. And I just yeah. like, all right, I, like I'll make it happen. But yeah. it's two hours of driving when I could be using that two hours. No, to... You don't even know what her budget is. Yeah, that too. Yeah. You don't even know. Like she might think that what you're about, like she might say, I'm not spending more than a thousand dollars. Some people have enough. I'm not spending more than a thousand bucks on this. And you're about to drive your tail all the way over there. What you should be doing is practicing with this lady and you should call her and say, Hey, Miss Jones, it's, you know, I'd like to go over what our expectations are. I know we had a chance to talk. You know, so typically I, I just like to know what your goal is for the project and say, generally speaking, we have two options for you. The first option is a repair and replace. Second option is a full restoration. Typically in terms of cost, we like to outline this option A, option B, and then see what happens. And she might say, oh, I typically like option A because that my budget's only three grand. I'm selling the house. And you say, great. So now at least you're driving there knowing that three grand's the baseline. You know? Gotcha. I, mean, I think you gotta gotta create that. And then the thing is, is like, dude, get the ad out. Don't forget that, man. I really hope you do that. I hope you get the ad out. I will okay. for sure. Uh, I, I just put out a new hiring course. Did you see my my school? No, if you give me the information, yeah. I would love that. Yeah, um, jump in it. It'll tell dude, it teaches you how to run the ad, teaches you where to put the ad, teaches you how to get the ad out. Teach you how to filter out the applicants. I mean, it's it's a hiring system that you can literally just plug in to your business. So I'll send I'll send you the link for it. it I think it's it's one of the best hiring courses you'll find. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, one more question. Sure. So some debt companies in my area they have like a almost like a estimator on their site almost that like kind of gives them like a roundabout number. Um, where they type in, you know, what I mean, their square footage, uh, this and that. I don't like that at number. All. It's just yeah. that's just like if I went to like, I I think the problem with that is is it just doesn't it lets the customer assume the value instead of you actually building the value. I agree. And I agree. in a, in a home service exchange, it's all emotional, right? So if I if they're just looking at numbers that they that's just kills an opportunity it'll just your people will go to your website see it's expensive and leave and you're missing True. out on a beautiful opportunity there i would never do that i think okay. anybody pricing on their website is missing out on a lot of opportunity i like that i like that so, yeah thank you man that was really good well, this is helpful yeah super helpful <laughs> and and you've been listening for a while there's some people that listen too that don't book a breakthrough, man. So I yeah. just want to point you maybe say something to that, man. Was it was yeah. it scary? Was it bad? Did, did I was I, a little nervous. I, I already knew some of the things you were going to say, so I didn't want to. 
I want to kind of work on some things on my own first before I actually needed the help. And this last month, like in May, I grossed 24K and last month I only grossed 8K because I was in yeah. that whole composite job for that whole, it was just, it messed up my whole month last month. And I was so busy with the composite job that I was slacking on my office work. You know, doing that so much on Friday, the weekend comes around, one day I'm back on it. So I've been trying, I want to love the price in the spot. Like you said, if I'm in the car for 45 minutes, it's not a big deal. It's just like with the, like you said, I kind of like the two categories. There's the rest of the staining and then like the composite side of it. Compo- you uh, staining is- on that pitch, dude. You should be role playing with your, with your wife or a significant other, man. Like you, should, you really need to work on that pitch. So when people call you, it sounds like you know what you're talking about. You know, and, and you got to be confident in that and be willing to lose the business yeah. if, if you're not okay with the way that you're doing it because you know the outcome. If you're only selling two out of 10, eight times, and it's again, this is about maximizing your time. Right now, you're not going to remove yourself from installation. I know that, you know, but you got to get to a point where you can. You can only do that with more sales. And more sales come from executing on, you know, qualified opportunity. And you're getting the lead flow, but I, I would also, as soon as you can afford it, turn Angie leads back on. Get yeah. as many leads as you can. Uh, I, Angie leads is awesome, especially with your automatic uh, follow ups. It's yeah. awesome, man. Heck yeah. People are always impressed and stuff. Yeah. I love the, I the text messages and stuff. The appointment reminders are huge. Yeah. That's awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. Good, man. Well, thank so. you for supporting me. And uh, I'll send you a link to the school if you want to join it. And uh, keep me updated, man. Come back sometime. Yeah, definitely will. I appreciate it so much. Of course, man. Happy soon.